This video is entitled URLs and Paths and is a companion piece to the book So You Want to Learn to Use HTML and CSS, Chapter 4. I'm James M. Renault, Ph.D. from Shawnee State University, and I'll be taking you through this uh, brief presentation. In this presentation, I'm going to very quickly describe what a URL is and uh, absolute and relative paths used in URLs. A URL, you've already seen when we included an image, we put source and a, a location of that file. That was a, a, a URL. Um, but, but before we go into anchors and the rest of Chapter 4, I thought we should spend a few minutes talking about them. The acronym URL stands for Uniform Resource Locator or Locators, and it describes the location of a file, image, PDF, something, video, audio, that exists somewhere on the internet somewhere. It allows us to link pages to pages, sites to sites, um, uh, link all over the world, um, link uh, from different companies and all different kinds of things. Also allows us to link across different services, not just HTTP, the, uh, the hypertext transfer protocol service that runs the, the that basically is what's behind web pages. Um, URLs come in two general formats, the relative format and the absolute format. Let's first look at absolute URLs. An absolute URL contains the full and total address of something on the internet, on the on on the servers, on the networks, and all of that. And it starts with a scheme. And the scheme tells us how to go get that information, whether it's HTTP, HTTPS, a secured HTTP connection, whether it's FTP or some of the other services that exist out there on the internet. So it starts with a scheme, and you can see that in the URLs above marked in red, followed by a colon slash slash. That was just part of the design. Then it's followed by something called the authority. And the authority is the name of the server that is the authority and has that piece of information. Um, so in the two examples above, you can see that the authorities are the server www at ESPN.com or the server www.msnbc.com. Um, the authority could also include a user name and password, but uh, most authorities don't. You just need to include the server name. Following the authority is a path. Uh, after the authority, there'll be a slash and a path. And that path is where on the server is that located. Um, the first here in the one above, MSNBC would be a folder. Watch would be a folder. And then Baby Hippo makes the most of a hot day with that number would be another folder. So it's saying go to... That subfolder within the watch folder within the MSNBC folder on the MSNBC server. Um, so paths include slashes. They can also include a file name at the end of the path. Paths can also include a query where we send data to the server for the data to interpret, and that's uh, it follows the path with a question mark and then the data. And then a path can, uh, URL can also include a fragment. So a absolute URL can include all five parts here. I only show the first three. But uh, in the next example of the relative URL, you'll see the rest of the, the other two bits. So now let's start looking at relative URLs. Relative URLs are relative to the current uh, documents location. So if you have a, a, a web page that you've loaded from a server, a relative URL looks in the same folder or subfolders or around that current document. That allows you to move a document and all of its relative stuff to another server without having to update all of the URLs to an absolute address. In the first example, 
um, here on the uh, above, you can see that second underscore page dot HTML would be a URL to the file second page HTML that's in the same folder as the URL as the document you've currently loaded. It uses the same scheme and same authority to to load that file in. The fourth example you can see says product slash cabbage dot JPEG. Well, that says go to a subfolder called products and you will find a picture called cabbage.jpg that you could then load. Again, a relative URL, a simple relative URL. The second um, relative URL up above contains a fragment, and it contains the fragment pound spinach. What that says is load the definitions page, find the HTML tag wherever it is with the ID of spinach, and automatically scroll to that point. So find the, the with the ID of spinach and scroll to that point. Now, if you wanted to, to jump within the same page, you could just use a URL of pound spinach, and it would jump within the same page without even loading another page. Um, but you can see there how the fragment works. The fourth thing, uh, the fourth URL I want to show you is the uh, update shopping cart or update cart.html. That says in the same folder, you'll find a document called update cart and we'll pass it item with the number 6789 and we'll pass it customer with AXG 89HY. So it's going to, to take those data bits and send it to that page as it's loading the page. And the server and the CGI script on the server is going to manipulate that data and possibly add it to the shopping cart. would add it to the shopping cart. So a um, relative URLs are great because if you're doing development on your local computer, on your local laptop, or you're doing development on one server, you can then copy that whole tree, all of those folders, to another server and nothing breaks. It just works because you're using relative URLs. This concludes our brief video on URLs relative and absolute. This presentation is copyright 2020 by James Zimmern, PhD. You can contact me at jim at renejm.com. Remember, this work is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution, non-commercial, share-alike, 4.0 international license, and I would like to say thank you for watching.